Hello guys, welcome back to our channel. In this episode, we'll be taking you through our Hockey and Me recipe. It's about half the calories of Nutribox. It's something super quick and easy. And then after that, I'll be talking about procrastinating, why you're probably procrastinating, and what you need to do mentally so you can overcome that and start achieving your goals. You guys can see we actually got some matching aprons Achieve Championship. So let us know down below what you guys think about it. And as always, if you're new to the channel, make sure you like, subscribe. We'll be showing you a lot of recipes a recipe every single week and there will be a lesson to be learned every week as well. So if you're into success and fitness, this is the perfect channel. So make sure you let us know down below what you want to see next. So let's talk about why we procrastinate. I'm sure we all have our reasons why we procrastinate, but typically we procrastinate when we're doing activities and tasks that we feel are unimportant or can be completed at a later date or doesn't provide you any direct value or benefit. And I do that too, Hang does it as well. I think we all do it, but it's important for us to understand why we procrastinate and what we can do to help overcome procrastination. So procrastination is a mentality and you subconsciously want to do something or you don't want to do something. So it's important that we change the way we think, the way we perceive these tasks so that we're not gonna treat it as a chore or a debt something that you owe someone. Procrastination is present in all avenues in my life. So whether it be school, uni, work or fitness, it doesn't matter. There's always going to be things that we don't like to do, things that we feel are unimportant and don't provide us direct value today. We're more likely to push it back at a later date. So for school, it might be an assignment that you're procrastinating studying. For work, it might be extra responsibilities or extra work your bosses ask you to do. Or for fitness, it might be extra cardio sessions or extra gym sessions that your coaches assign you to do. It doesn't matter what it is, we're gonna find these tasks that we don't wanna do in all avenues of our lives. And we need to learn how to process these thoughts. And inevitably, these tasks are actually critical for us to hit our end goal. So for you to progress after school or uni, you need to get experience. And for work, you need experience and skills in that particular workplace for you to advance. And in fitness, you need time that you've spent, quality time that you've spent in the gym training and doing your cardio for you to achieve your results. And at the end of the day, if we're gonna be pushing back these tasks and activities, we're actually gonna get further away from our deadline. So if you've set yourself a deadline for any particular reason, so for school, it might be your uni degree. For work, it might be time until you get promoted. Um, for fitness, it might be the way you look for summer or a certain event or a certain occasion. It doesn't matter. You've set yourself a goal and you imagine that it takes you three months or three years. If those three months or three years start today assuming that you put in the work every single day. And every day that you don't put in that work, you're actually pushing that deadline back. So it's important that you hold yourself accountable to your goals and map out how to achieve your goal in X amount of time. So if it's your uni degree, it takes you three years, you need to map out what your milestones are before you hit those three years. You don't just push everything back and hope that one day, once you receive a magic piece of paper, you're gonna become qualified. Or same thing with fitness, that just because the time has passed that you've magically made your progress, just because you've shown up at the gym three or four times a week, doesn't mean you're gonna make the progress in three or four months time. And just because you've worked in the same place for two or three years, it doesn't mean that you are eligible for a promotion. So we need to start looking at these tasks as not chores and debts that we owe someone. We need to start seeing the value in each of these tasks to ourselves. So for every assignment that you do that you're in school, you're actually gaining a lot of experience. So after three years, how many stories have you heard of people graduating and not being able to find a job? Just because they've spent their time in uni, have done the assignments, they've passed and they've graduated, it doesn't make them a better applicant than someone else who's actually done extra work during that time. So in a previous episode, we spoke about decisions and how every time you make a decision, your universe splits into two, a version of you that does it and a version of you that doesn't. So for example, you've just started work and then there's a parallel version of you that also started in the same role. That parallel version of you takes up every opportunity to do extra work, takes up extra opportunities to take up more responsibilities and always putting in 110%. Think about how they can benefit the company rather than exchanging service for money. While another version of you just does absolute bare minimum, doesn't do a single minute more than they're paid for and only thinks about the value that the company is giving them rather than what value they can provide the company. So in about three years time, 
They are both looking for a promotion, a new role. Which one of them do you think they're gonna hire? The person who has sought out after opportunities time and time again, or the person that does bare minimum? Just because you've spent that time, it doesn't mean you've made the most of it. You can be spending time and wasting time at the same time. So the same thing can be said about fitness. You can be spending hours at the gym every week and training for months or years on end and not get the results that you want. It's because you haven't spent the quality time to make sure you're progressing in the gym. And if you just show up thinking that just because time passed, you're gonna get the results, it's not gonna happen. And that's how you're gonna fall off your diet and fall off your program and end up back to square one. So in short, we shouldn't see these tasks as chores or debts that we owe someone, but as opportunities. So for school, every assignment that you do leads to experience. For work, everything that you do outside your role leads to opportunities. And for fitness, every session that you do leads to progress. The one thing that I've learned over the last few years is that there isn't enough time in the day and that everything that you ever want in life can be exchanged for with time. If you've ever needed to save it for a house or a car, those are all things that you exchange for with time. Time that you've spent providing a service for you to get paid. So knowing that you can buy the things that you want with time, every time that you procrastinate and you don't do things, you're wasting time and you're spending it like a credit card. So for example, with uni, if you have three weeks to complete an assignment and you leave it until the last minute and now you have to cram everything that you needed to do within one day. So how are you getting the most value for the whole time that you've spent in school? If for fitness, you needed to do uh, X amount of cardio sessions a week, you should try to get that done out of the way at the start of the week rather than leaving it to the end of the week and having to do three or four days in a row of hard cardio. So that's an example of how you've also just wasted your time. And chances are, because you've left it so long, you're probably not gonna do it. And another week goes by where you don't complete your objectives or your tasks. And it's because once you're in the habit of procrastinating, you start to procrastinate a lot. And that's why credit cards is a very big problem because once people know that they can start spending, they just start swiping the card. And that's exactly what you're doing when you're wasting time and you're procrastinating. You're spending the time that could be used productively, getting you somewhere, but you're just not really doing anything. When you put off doing something because you just can't be bothered, you end up spending most of your day having something in the back of your head hanging there reminding you that you need to do it and you keep putting it off. You keep telling yourself, you'll do it later, you'll do it later. And it's like a nagging voice at the back of your head. You end up spending most of your day miserable anyway. And if you spend most of your life procrastinating, you're literally spending the majority of your life in misery, procrastinating and putting things off and not feeling a sense of relief. Instead of putting things off, you should get things done whenever you can, as fast as you can, treat it like another objective. What you should do is actually get a whiteboard. Hang and I have a whiteboard. We start writing down our objectives and it gets annoying seeing a whiteboard and not having anything checked off. And just having that feeling of ticking off objectives, it gets you in the mood to want to do more objectives. If you're used to just sitting there doing nothing, then your body's naturally gonna want to just sit there and do nothing again. But if you are in the habit of ticking off objectives, you're gonna see that pattern in every avenue of life. And that's why I've said in episode one that fitness was the start of everything for us because fitness taught us the discipline and being able to go out and checking off these checkpoints and milestones, we apply the same principle to our work and career. Ever since I put more effort into fitness, my work and my career also took off as well. So now that we know that everything we want in life, we can exchange for with time. For example, a house based on your current income might take you 30 years. And another way we can fast track this is in your work, you can take up extra tasks and opportunities to fulfill duties outside your role, which will then lead to more opportunities, which down the line will lead to a promotion, which means you're increasing your income, reducing the amount of time that it's gonna take for you to save up for the house. Or you can even generate new streams of income, which instead now of taking 30 years to save up might take you 10 years. So because you've put in more effort and you've worked harder, you've actually saved yourself time. So instead of taking 30 years, it now takes you 10, which leaves you another 20 years that you can spend on something else, further advancing yourself, 
once again. So for us to do this, we need to stop exchanging time for money, but exchange time for experience. And your experience is gonna determine your salary or the path which you're gonna take your business. So instead of thinking how much money you're gonna earn for X amount of hours that you're gonna work, think about how much experience you can get in the shortest amount of time possible, because that's what's gonna get you that promotion where you use time to your advantage. And that's what I've done in my career. I've only been working full-time for three years, but during that time, ever since I first started working full-time at a bank until now, I've actually doubled my salary. And how I did that wasn't just based on my experience, but it was based on my experience given the short amount of time that I had. Within my first role, within six months, I became a coach and I started doing all the development and the training and even facilitated some of the training as well. In a very short amount of time, I became an SME. And once I've hit the one year mark at my role, I've collected enough experience. And at that point, the longer I stay, the more I'm gonna learn, yes, but it's the point of diminishing returns that I knew that I've collected enough skills at that point. So I embarked on another journey, another place where it was completely foreign to me, another industry where it was related to the field that I was in, but it was completely new. And for me, that was, an opportunity for me to enhance my experience and my knowledge. And fast forward a year and a half, I am now a project manager at a managed fund unit registry. So that's just an example how I've used time to my advantage. How can I make the most of that time? So when that opportunity came up, I am 100% prepared already. So say with work, you've spent two or three years in your same role and you don't see yourself progressing. You need to reflect on yourself and look, could you have done better? Could you have maximized your time and the value that you receive from the time that you're at work? And do you deserve that promotion? And all those questions only you can answer yourself because only you know the exact effort that you're capable of pushing. And if you've ever been in a role and you're not putting in 100%, then you're selling yourself short because when that time comes up and the ask is for experience and you don't have that, you don't really have anyone else to blame because you could have paved your path and made that opportunity possible. Wasted time is already in the past. So time that we wasted, there's no point dwelling on it and having a sook about it and working ourselves up over it. It's all about the time and opportunities that we have now and today moving forward. Everything else in the past is forgiven as long as we start working now. So say that you've already wasted time and you've spent most of the time you needed to spend instead of doing your assignment or work on your career or start something that you've wanted to start, you've wasted time, forget about it. It's fine, start today, start now. You need to have the mentality of starting today. So with my fitness journey, I've been training on and off for about 10 years, but two years ago, I drew a line and I said, this is it. This is the moment where I'm actually gonna finally commit to it and not gonna give up. And it was actually Boxing Day. And we went out that night, but mentally, that was my first day of my diet. Even though I drank, I still made it fit my calories. And in a few days time, it was New Year's, same thing. I still went out, had fun, but I made sure it fit my calories, but mentally, that was when I started. It wasn't next week, it wasn't New Year's. And I know a lot of you guys have New Year's resolution. And if your New Year's resolution was to get fit, it's been seven months, you should be fit by now. It doesn't matter how much you have to lose, seven months is enough time for you to make substantial difference to your body composition. And chances are, throughout lockdown, that might have been a big hurdle for you. So it would have been hard for you to commit to it, but we went through the same hurdle. It's not about all our disadvantages. It's about how we can make the most of our current situation. Everyone has their story. Everyone has a place of hardship, which is what we spoke about in episode one. What the message that we're trying to send here with this series is that you're always gonna come up against hardship every day, every week. And it's arbitrary what these hurdles are. So it's about making the most of the time that you have today and not wasting any more time because if you've committed to a goal to get fit or to get your degree, you're still obligated to that goal. And now you're just gonna have much, much less time, but it's better than wasting any more time and putting it off even further and having even less time. So the mentality that you need to have, the paradigm shift is for you to get things out of the way first so that you can rest afterwards. If you are spending most of your day thinking about a task that you don't like doing, for example, like cardio, you're constantly putting it off, you're saying, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, then you're always gonna hate it. You need to change the way you think about it and don't think of cardio as something that you hate or as a chore. 
Think of it as something that's gonna benefit you both mentally and physically. Same thing with works. Don't see it as something that you owe someone. See it as a gateway to getting more experience so when that opportunity comes for that promotion, you are first in line. And for uni, think about every assignment that you put in your heart and soul into it's gonna get you closer to getting that job once you graduate because you've actually applied yourself during your time. And that's the most important thing in everything you, that you do is to apply yourself, bet on yourself and double down when things get tough because if you really believed in yourself from the start, it doesn't matter what obstacle comes your way, you should be confident enough to double down and bet that you're gonna be able to accomplish what you need to because if you don't believe in yourself, no one else will. And it starts off with a bulletproof mentality. You need to get all these things that you don't like doing out of the way first so that you can enjoy your free time. So your free time is a reward and it's not a privilege. So that means you start to value your free time. And now that you value your free time, every time you waste time, you can think of it as a wasted opportunity. Hello, today we'll be showing you how to make oyster sauce Hokkien mee with chicken and prawn. These are all the ingredients we need today. This is soy sauce, oyster sauce, prawns, chicken, Hokkien noodles, capsicum, bok choy, onions and garlic and chilli is optional. First off we'll start chopping up the veggies and marinating the chicken. Let's go! In that place. I'm crying guys. Andrew's bullying me. <laughs> nah, seriously though, these onions are... Hey, what was that tip that you're meant to do? Like put a bowl of water near near you when you cut onions or something? I forgot what it was. Do any of you guys love garlic as much as I do? <laughs> When the recipe says two cloves of garlic, it means five. All the veggies are done. We've finished cutting it up. Now we'll go on to our chicken. We'll marinate it with soy sauce and garlic. We'll just mix it around a little bit. Alright guys, we forgot to tell you that we need to chop up our chicken into smaller pieces today. <laughs> so, um, you can cut it up to small pieces like this. So now the veggies are done, the meat's done, the prawn is already cooked so we'll just chuck that in the frying pan later. Now we'll go and make our noodles. We'll pour some water, boil some water. <laughs> our water is nice and hot now. Now we'll chuck our noodles in for a minute or two. Remember to don't pick up the noodles, that will break the noodle. You, what you want to do is shake it a little bit so it falls apart. We'll leave the noodles in for about one to two minutes and we'll take it out or else the noodles will start to become soggy. And now it's about time, let's go! I've prepared everything on the table here and now we'll bring all this outside and fry it in our frying box. Now we're outside in our second kitchen where the wok is so when you fry it all the oil and stuff can go flying and it doesn't really matter. Um, now we'll start off with the chicken. Oh, actually, I need to turn this on first. We'll make sure the wok is really hot or else when you put your chicken in, the chicken will stick to the wok. We're just gonna sear the chicken. We're not gonna cook it all the way through. We'll just get a nice brown around the side. We'll pour a little bit more soy sauce to give it a little bit more colour. We've been cooking the chicken for about 5-10 to 10 minutes. Now we can take it out. The reason why we cook the chicken first and not, not the veggies all together is because chicken normally takes longer to cook and it will be all wilted if you cook together. Now we'll put the veggies in and stir fry our veggies. Sauce into our veggies as well. 
The veggies is 90% done. Now we're going to put in our chicken and our prawns. And after that, we'll put in our noodles as well and add all the sauce. Now we'll put in um, some oyster sauce. We'll put in around two tablespoons. should serve around three people. This is about three servings. enjoyed the recipe today this meal here itself is really high in protein it's got a lot of chicken a lot of prawns it's half the calories of a noodle box where you'll get it outside the, at the shop and let me know what you guys want us to cook next We're done guys. This should serve around three. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ta-da! We're done guys. This is <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Hi. Hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Uh, I know it took a little bit longer to get this one out. We had a two-week break. And just like what we talked about in the episode, when things get tough, we work harder. And during this time, we actually spent a lot of time learning motion graphics. Um, and for any of you guys that actually care, in the first few episodes, all our motion graphics, we used the template, and now we've actually invested time to actually learn to do it ourselves. It was a big time investment, but now it's gonna pay off in the long run. As you can see in today's episode, all the motion graphics now match appropriately with what we say. We don't have to uh, use a template and try to work around that. We can actually design everything. So everything that we can think of, we can create. The same thing can be said about stage four lockdown. It's a lot harder for us to train now. So what we did was we started building our home gym. We started investing into a home gym and in the long run, it's gonna provide us a lot more benefit because it's gonna save us a lot of transit time traveling to and from and it gives us creative freedom to be able to record at home and being in a, an environment that we're comfortable as well. Um, so what we did was we actually built our own platform we bought all the supplies we built it my dad was kind enough to build us the pull down bar and is actually building the dip station as well you'll see more of our home gym build next week in the beginning of the video it was just us putting the platform together um, next week you'll see a little bit more and hopefully within the next one to two weeks everything's going to be completed we're actually in the process right now of designing the achieve championship logo on our platform just to personalize it a little bit anyway we hope everyone's been staying safe throughout these COVID times as always, and we'll hope to see you again next week. Peace. All right. I'll say hello and we can be on the top. Oh, I really scratch myself. Oh. Oh, we both say hi at the same time. You can just back. What do you want to do? We'll both just be like, hello guys, and then you can be like, welcome back to the channel, blah, 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 and then you just talk whatever you want to talk. All right, sure. <laughs> Ready? Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Are you going to say Ready? it yeah. with me too? All right, hello guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? All right. No, you can just say hello, I'll say, just say welcome to the episode. So you just start off, I'll just follow in right after you. Okay, all right. Hello, guys. Let's try again. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> I should be just say everything and no, then I'll just stand no, here. No, just go, you can say hello. Hello, guys. Welcome back to the channel. I don't know what to say now. All right, I'll just say hello, guys. Maybe I should have thought about what I needed to say first. <laughs> One eternity later. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. 
Emin, ada bebek ada. Hi guys, welcome. Alright, I'll start again. You want to do it? Hello guys, welcome back to the channel today. <laughs> I didn't expect today to come in. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that threw me completely off. Who <laughs> oh. the best are flying along with each other? Eh? <laughs> right, let's right. go. Hey, I like. <laughs> 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 Alright right, guys, welcome back to our channel. In this episode, we will take you through our Hokkien Mi recipe. Super low calories, it's about half the calories of traditional noodle box. And I'll also be taking you through, or talking to... Uh, blah, 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 start again. <laughs> oh my... <laughs> my, my part was done. Alright, let's go. Alright. You're in front, ready? Alright. 